Took us a while, but we got here. Yeah, two cancellations, I think. Was it two? Like two oh, it wasn't reschedules? Two. It wasn't... Okay, I... <laughs> kind like, we of usually record on Monday, but like a week prior, I'd said to Connor, can we do it on the Thursday? Uh, I don't think that counts as a cancellation. Uh, a reschedule. But... Yeah, but then mm. the Thursday was a bit of a cancellation. Sorry. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I had to work. But, That's okay. Um, well, here we are now yeah, on, a, uh, on, a, on a Saturday, so... Mate, cutting it fine. Cutting it fine. Just the two bit. episode, two two days before broadcast. That's what this is. But you know, um, we kind of said like it's it's nice to be like up to date with the news and stuff. And but not like there's been really any. Yeah. But there's not been any big news to talk yeah. about. But at least we're kind of. I was thinking that in the I, loop. I think there's only been one time that we've been two days out. I remember we did one time that I think you cancelled and we had to do it on a Saturday morning before. Um, mm. before before a Monday episode. Yeah, we did um, we did midnight and... on a Saturday, and we also did go on the fireplace on a Saturday with Xavier. Xavier, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember going, but going on the fireplace. I think we planned to do that. Um, and and so that wasn't like, I think that was done like a week and a half before. I, like whereas there's only been one time I think where we've cut it this fine to the episode actually sort of coming out. If you know yeah. what I mean. Um, yeah. But. I was yeah. I was thinking this morning. I was like, "Fuck!" There, there's literally like no news to talk about that would have been cool. And I know I mean, we could have finished off with Chris, it, but like, there, there's not much to really say about that, you know? <laughs> yeah, there's no. It's weird because like, there's meant to be a season coming out um, in a couple of months, like August, September time, and there's not even been like a promo image or anything. Like, it'd be interesting to see when they yeah. start doing the hype train and start marketing and stuff. I don't know. Mm. I don't know when they'll well, do it. They're still shooting, but... so they are. Yeah. I wonder if like I wonder if they'll push it back a little bit. I wonder if they've had issues and stuff. I don't know, but it must be hard with COVID. Mm. I couldn't even imagine what it'd be like in the UK with filming. It just sounds. I mean, a production is hard enough as it is. Like imagine, imagine yeah. doing it. I know there's less episodes, but imagine doing it in COVID and stuff. Like that's pretty crazy. I just watched. Yeah, I just watched the Rachel Talale video because she's got a YouTube channel up at the moment, and she did a video talking about the scene where at the start of. The Doctor Falls, where Bill's Mon Dass inside men's carrying and the Doctor. Yeah. And yeah. she broke so down she that scene. That. Man, a simple scene like that, which you think wouldn't be that like difficult to shoot, it was like apparently hell on set. Like they rocked up and they were already behind filming and like th- they had issues with yeah. the stunt double uh of of like because it was a stunt double that was getting carried for Peter, and then like the Mon Dass inside men couldn't carry the stunt double because of like the like the square chest that the Mondasian Sidemen have. Mm. And it was like, you could hardly see out the Mondasian Sidemen suit and like the ground was all rocky. So like, it was impossible. And they had, yeah. the way they did it, they had to like put the stunt double and then Peter in like another shot on this like, on this like thing that's like, can be CGI'd out, but then they had to like work with the smoke as well. And there was a ship that wasn't built. that was supposed to be in the background. Like it just sounded like, shit man like you look at that it's like on the screen yeah, for like okay. 20 seconds but it took so much effort to be made like yeah crazy that's crazy man there's so many small details on like a um so we were just shooting a music video earlier in the week and something that just was so time consuming and just painful to do mm-hmm. was like um for all the wide shots we wanted to have just like a bit more texture on the floor so we made it wet so we literally like um every like five ten minutes just had to like have these big wet towels that we wet and just like scrub the floor just because there was a bunch of screens in in the frame and like there were light reflection off of the tv off of the tv screens looked fucking awesome on the floor um and it's just like these small things that just take so fucking long to do but you get there and you survive <laughs> yeah and people just like watch this and like probably don't even think about it like they're just like ah mm. which is part of your job as a filmmaker is that you don't really want people to notice it in a way like exactly you should, just yeah. be, you should just be involved in it and like yeah but now nah, she's the best um we should try to get her on in the future but <laughs> yeah like, hopefully when she directs we'll, we'll... one of one of pete's episodes we should because she seems really cool like she seems really into like the uh she seems really cool with the fans and stuff and i'm sure she'd mm. come on like but we'll we'll have to see, I guess. Like, we'll have to see. Mm. Mm. Gotta 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 start getting guests on at some point. <laughs> We've been talking yeah, about it from really the bad. start. <laughs> I feel really bad because like um I'm going on Vinny's podcast to to review Jaws, and I yeah. keep, it's a bit of a joke. Like every time she posts on like Instagram, 
from her account, I'm like, I just send like Jaws question mark, like, because I keep <laughs> wanting to go on. Um, and she's like, where's my 50% invite? And I'm like, it's it's true. I'm not holding back. I just, I'm so bad at that stuff. I've been saying to people, you should come on. And then like, I just never plan it. But I've, I've spoken to, mm. I've spoken to um, Dylan and Vinny about doing some live Instagram live shows with them where I just want to call them and just have a chat and like, you know, talk about Doctor Who and life and stuff. And they've both agreed mm. to that. So that'd be good as well. But also we'll definitely get them on the show at some point. I swear, like, I've never gone on a podcast before. I've got two and I've filmed, like, I'm filming my <laughs> 100th episode today of For a Laugh and we've done more than 100 because we kind of rebooted the show a few times. We've done over over 50 of this. Like, I've done so many fucking episodes of podcasts and I've never gone on one and I really <laughs> want to. Even you've done it. You went on ours. Fucking Dan comes on this mm-hmm. one. Everyone's done it but me. So I am oh, being a bit of a sook. That's a shame. But I'm being a bit of a sookie Big sook for Connor. But <laughs> hey, man, I, I want to talk about Jaws. I got the 4K for my birthday and I've been really keen to rewatch it. So um, yeah. I'm happy to, to do that. So yeah. Get the dogs. Aren't you going on to review um, Jurassic Park? I think so. We mentioned it, but we've not really spoken about it. Um, you should. That'd so, be fun. So. That'll be fun, yeah. If we can, you can if get we can the dogs. Schedule it and make it make it happen. Get um, the dogs. Get the dogs, mate. Uh, we're talking about some lizards today. This is just, that's my <laughs> lizard sound effect, just hissing. Um, the some green scaly boys. Wow, crazy! That's some green boys. The Chris Chibnall um, episode, baby. Wow, it's a Chibnall. It's a Chibnall. Wow. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 percent. Pop, 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 cat, cat, cat. Probably, I don't know. I have soft spots for his season seven episodes, but these episodes might be like the strongest ones he's done for the show. I'm not sure. Don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm with you on that one. I, this was like, this was like probably my favorite episode of the series when I was a young lad. I fucking loved hmm. these episodes. I was like, this is peak season five for me i remember like i even really? this is how much i liked it like my mum my mum like uh hadn't seen any of season five yet like any of matt or like karen or anyone like <clears throat> so this is the episode i introduced this whole new era to i showed her these two episodes because i was convinced they were the best to show like what what season five had to offer i was like this is the best one you could watch and <laughs> I still, I still don't think it's terrible. I actually, I actually, I didn't, I didn't love it, but I think it was, a, it was a lot better than stuff that we're getting right now. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's good fun. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's just like, it's just a bit of a middle ground. For me, it's like in a series of absolute bangers, it just doesn't kind of cut it, you know? Yeah. It's, it was like, it, it happened. I watched it. Didn't really think much of it afterwards. It's quite... I was thinking yesterday as well, like, a lot happens in it, but also, if you look back on it, it's, like, quite simple and, like, you kind of, like, actually not really a lot did happen. Like, it felt like a lot happened, but not a lot really did. Especially in part two, it's, like, yeah. not much really did go on. Um, yeah. But it was um, definitely I mean, an enjoyable yeah. watch. We'll, we'll get into into that stuff in a second. Uh, I didn't actually say, though, the episodes are The Hungry Earth and... The uh, uh, and cold blood. That's right. Had a mental blank there. So, Hungry Earth is the eighth episode of the fifth series of the British science fiction television series Doctor Who, which was first broadcast on the twenty second of May, twenty ten, on BBC One. It was written by Chris Chibnall. Hey, get the dogs. Whoa! In the episode, the eleventh Doctor, a time traveling alien, played by Matt Smith and his companions Amy Pond, Karen Gillan, and Rory Williams. Arthur Darville land in Wales in 2010, where a drilling operation headed by Nazreen Kahori Mira Sayal, maybe that's how it's said, I'm not sure, is drilling deep in the earth and disrupting a civilization of Silurians who dwell beneath the earth. The Silurians cause holes to open the earth, one of which consumes Amy. The Doctor and Rory capture one Silurian, Alaya Neve McIntosh, and the Doctor instructs Rory and a local family to not harm a layer, as it could spark a war. I'm gonna. I'm just, it keeps going. I'm just gonna cut it there. That was so overly detailed. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, Connor's just vaping away as I as I read through the synopsis. 
yeah, well, I got a vape yesterday because, like, <clears throat> I don't know, I kind of just got fucking sick of, like, smoking so much. So I was like, fuck it. I'm not going to get cold turkey with, like, having a puff here and there, but I was like, I just want to kind of slow down a little bit on how much I've been having. So, yeah, I got, I got a vape. It's, mm, it's been good, I'm, actually. I'm, There's I'm no nicotine in it either. How is it? <coughs> how is it? How is it? <laughs> By the way, this, this, what? this GERD, the GERD gang got right now, the fucking this in my throat is because I just woke up like an hour ago. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. you woke hey, up I, and then just had a fucking shoved a pack of durries in your mouth. And I haven't, you <laughs> I haven't. It's just so mean. Like everyone's been so judgmental about it. I'm like, all right, so I do this and everyone hates me for it. And now I get this to fix it. And everyone still hates me. I can't win. Isn't it like, is it, isn't like vape one of those things? I, I don't know. I, I don't do it. So I can't confirm these stats, but mm-hmm. isn't there like something that, wasn't like said about vapes and then it came out like a few months ago that vapes are actually really bad because they, they do something else to you i think you got to be careful where you get your juices from i know that was a big thing like a lot of people were buying yeah. like their juices on like hell weird like websites and stuff and then they were causing some issues um as far as i'm aware there's nothing it's not look i don't i don't at all think it's healthy like to do it but mm. i think it's definitely a healthier alternative to what i was doing um and it was starting to just get worse and you know my sister's like a full-time smoker so i didn't i didn't i just didn't want to become like that not to mention it was very expensive Mm. so um i never did it i never did it sober i was always just like when i was down the pub and it was like it's mostly the only reason i really did it was it was a really good stress relief for me um but Mm. i don't recommend it i started when i was like 18 and it slowly started to get worse so i was like to me this is like this is a bit of a stepping stone um but and I'm kind of like, uh, well, hopefully, fingers crossed, I'm kind of seeing someone at the moment. And I didn't want to be that guy who's like kind of with someone and then I'm constantly walking off. And like, you know, I mean, she was she was not mad that I was doing it, but like, I didn't want to put that on her either. And if I can change my life for the better, then why not? You know, so there you go. That's now, I just, just, it, now I just look like a massive dick. Well, I mean, like, the usual, real, but that's the real reason behind it. Like my best friend Mitchell, like, hate, hated that I did it um because he really mm. cares about me but um you know i now now i'm doing this and it's like a bit of a step in the right direction um look I, if i were you i wouldn't start because like it's just like it's just it just gets worse and worse and you get that dependency on it um but yeah so again i don't i'm not gonna go cold turkey i, I reckon when i go away on holiday because i'm gonna go away on holiday in like a month or two i wouldn't mind just like getting myself like a pack here and there as long as i don't take it too far i'm happy to just have some every couple of months like maybe a pack a month but um definitely want to so because at the moment i was doing maybe like a pack a week which isn't that bad if you think about it but like you know still it was like pushing it a little bit for me um and i've got no like i've got like no self-control like i i can't just like stop it takes time and it, that's why i had to compromise with with this so yeah riffing fat clouds <sighs> Mm, hashtag vape nation i vape just worry nation. that the, the listeners are gonna just hear you vaping throughout the i'm episode. very quiet don't worry you're a quiet vapor yeah i'll allow I'm it like the, I'm i'll like allow the, it until the, i get your audio later today and i hear it that's when i'll that's when i, I won't allow it bro i'm a, I'm a been a podcaster for a long time i know i know what to not put near the mic except for that time i chewed gum that was a bit silly yeah two episodes you were fucking numbing down on some gum the whole way through the episode <laughs> oh but by the way before we jump into the episode as well um this sounds like a meme because aiden obviously audio recorded for his computer like two episodes ago <laughs> then we had an episode that was fine and then i did the exact same thing in like 50 plus episodes we've never done that and then somehow we managed so to weird. do it in like three episodes time we both managed to separately do it twice like we did it once <laughs> each sorry yeah like that's insane so, like how could we do that as we were coming onto the show today our, me and connor were both like all right let's yeah. both check our audio and make sure it's recording through our actual microphones yeah so we I should did be like good a this huge week, mic I test hope. yeah i did like a huge <laughs> mic test before and like i was like not again like because it sounded really bad if you notice like in the episode i don't think people know this but um it sounded okay at the start but then normally if like my ass is getting a bit numb and i want to stand up i'll like I'll stand up and flip my laptop around and my phone so Aiden can see me and I like pull my mic up so I can stand up and talk. And that I did that in that episode. I don't do it all the time, but I did it in that episode, which means I was facing even further away from my computer. So mm. at the start, it didn't sound too bad, but... See you, mate. See you, mate. Catch ya. Yeah. I'm just filming see on you, the mate. pod. 
Okay. See you, Connor's right. dad. Look, make sure you look after the place. Yeah, love you. <clears throat> yeah, the good old, good old fam bam. The dogs. Um, but yeah, anyway, sorry about that. It sounded awful. I'm sorry. I, I really, I finally finished the episode yesterday. I'm like, thank God for that. Like, it sounded terrible. So, <laughs> I didn't Papa bless. Um, Papa bless. Shall we get into the episode? Into the episodes. This Let's do epic, it. scaly, oh. slithery boy two-parter. Fuck's sake, two epi- two parties are always such a bitch to recap. Okay, yeah. Yeah. let's, get, let's, let's do this. All right. Um, isn't it 2020 it's set, which is pretty funny? Wasn't it meant to be last year? Sure is. Last it's, year, uh, mate. Last year. It's Wales 2020. Um, is it Wales? It's meant to be Cardiff, like not Cardiff, but Wales type place. I think it's Wales. Yeah, somewhere in yeah. Wales. Let me say in Wales. Yeah, because everyone's got, everyone's got like Welsh accents and stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, it is yeah. Wales. It, yeah, I'm, I'm reading. Yeah, it here. land in Wales, 2020. So I, I didn't want to fuck it up from the from the get go. Um, <laughs> and then we get to see, uh, we get to see. Uh, I got the names here as well. I, got, I get to see Mo going to work Mo. and Mo Mo Mo, who looks like Andrew Lincoln, by the way, which is pretty funny. It's like <laughs> literally does, like hey. Andrew Lincoln's like doppelganger, which is pretty funny. Um, <laughs> he goes to work. They're at this like drilling company. It's like drilling. Uh, for some reason, this entire episode, you never see anyone else apart from these characters. Like, there's not even like... Yeah, I thought they try and explain it in one line where they're like, oh, the the only people that live in the town uh, is the family and then everyone else travels into town for work. But I'm like, why is there a whole town then? Yeah, why is there a whole town then? It doesn't make any sense. Like, you literally don't see any like extras apart from the characters that are in this episode. Yeah. <laughs> really weird. But anyway, Mo gets taken. There's like this hole in the ground. Uh, the earth almost... Like, it looks like Earth is, like, eating him in a way. Like, he just gets taken down. Uh, I like it. I think it's a fun intro. Again, this episode used to send me as a kid. I was like, I love this, yeah. like, start. It was awesome. I just want to say, right right off the bat, though, um, I just feel like I, w- I was listening to the dialogue just because, you know, biggest flaw of Chibnallara is the dialogue. And yeah. So I was really listening listening to it. Um, and kind of dissecting it a little bit. And right off the bat, like, I, I fucking, I still hear it. Like, I still think he, he's not, he's really not great at, at writing dialogue. I, I think the performers um, have elevated it, I think. Mm. Um, and maybe, maybe these guys are a little better at, like, um, taking shit dialogue and still having a bit of fun with it. But it's all, like, a bit on the nose and a bit, like, explaining everything that's going on and shit like that. So, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I thought the, I get what you mean though about the performers, because like when I was like I was like you, I was trying to listen to the dialogue, and I think Chib was a lot better at writing for other people's characters. Like the the dialogue he gives Matt and like and um, Matt and bye, um, the the dialogue he gets like Matt and Amy and and Rory and all that. I think really suits their characters, and and especially Matt did like a really good job of of just working with that, like you said, cringy exposition dialogue that that chip is like that just exposition dump that he gives us like during his mm. episodes was like oh, i'm gonna solve this in a sentence and i think it really suited yeah. matt's character and i think that's what kind of he wanted to go with, with with jody and i don't know what happened along the line but i think when he had to actually write his own character that was just pure exposition dump i don't think it worked very well but i i liked i like what he was doing with their characters i had some fun moments I like how Amy dressed for Rio. That was a fun little gag. I like how it's like a running <laughs> gag where like the doctor always tries to go somewhere that ends up in the wrong place, which is a funny yeah, little yeah. gag that always happens. And um, like a few times through the episode, Amy's like, I dressed for Rio. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Like it's a cool little thing that he keeps, that keeps getting brought up in the episodes. So this one part, I still do not get. What is with Amy and Rory being in the distance? What is with that? Like they're waving to the future <laughs> selves. What is that? Yeah. It makes no they just, sense. They just wanted to... They just wanted to pop by and visit them. It makes no sense. Like, how did they know that, like, for, I know they could probably be like us the day that we went there, but how do they know what time they're going to be there? They just wait there all day and wait for them to rock up in the tires. Like, oh, we'll just stand here for hours waiting for us to arrive in the... Well, because they live through it. Yeah, but I know. But, like, when they land the TARDIS, and it's very specific, but when they land the TARDIS, they don't know what time it is. Like, they could have just been like... I'm sure at one point... They fucking checked the clock. And, and like, they were that's like, probably oh. how we know in the future to go there. Because they spent like over a day in this town. So I'm sure, you know, when it started going dark, they were like, oh, must be about 5.30 p.m. 
yeah. um, or or whatever. Oh, we've been here for like four hours, haven't we? Yep. Okay. That'll anyway, it doesn't matter because it never happens in the end because Rory gets erased and then they both get sent back in time. So it never happened. <laughs> That's what I mean, though. They do get sent back in time. So why are they there? Like, is that the unit? Is that the ultimate place they're going to go to if they didn't get taken away in Angels and Man? Yeah, I, I think it's the classic. Like, time can be rewritten. I guess I so. I never really liked it, but it was it's fine. Um, I think it's a cool concept. Rory goes back to uh, put the the ring back into the TARDIS because Amy's walking around with it. I thought that was really nice. It's a it's a nice bit of. Um, like you said, after Vampires and Venice, I do think the characters and Vampires and Venice and Amy's choice I like to see how the characters have like progressed and stuff. Um, mm. And then he goes to put the ring away, and when he comes out, they're like, "Oh, you're the police." That was quickly. That was quick. Like, uh, come check this out. And they go to the graves to see. And it's a cool setup. It's like a a Murray score as well. It's like very mysterious. It's like the graves, like they disappeared. Like one of her uh, uncles has died, and like the auntie was in there. And then when they went to dig the grave mm. up, she wasn't in there anymore. That's, it's cool. kind of spooky. I I do that that concept. I like. I think that's cool. Um, I don't know. Like, it doesn't one. It doesn't get explained. Like, what happened to that body? They they just took it, I guess, and ate it. I don't know. I assume. Um, yeah, I assume like that. Yeah, like maybe it just like because the earth was all being like it was like things were falling through. I assume the body just fell through. I don't know. Uh, maybe, but um, yeah, I was gonna say with the Rory putting the ring part, putting the ring back. That just felt like a lot of plot convenience for me. Just like him just turning around and being like, what do you think you're doing with your wedding ring on that I spent fucking thousands of dollars to buy you? a lot of money. Money. (laughs) I like that. that. (laughs) But it's like, I I don't know. I feel like there's no reason why she couldn't go off wearing this ring. Uh, It just felt like so convenient. Like if they ever go on holiday, is she not allowed to bring the engagement ring? Is like... It, it's I just kind of get it, I guess, but convenient and shitty. I think. Well, like, it's like I wear I wear this um, gold chain I'm wearing right now, and it was like my granddad wore it, and then my dad wore it, and then I wear it now. So I kind of what I got from it is like when I go out clubbing or something, I'll always wear it under my shirt, just in case. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's not worth a lot of money, but it's worth something to me. You know, like it's worth like it's part of my family's history. So I kind of think that's what they were going for. But I do get the, the plot convenience of like, they had to get Amy, sorry, they had to get Rory away from Amy and the Doctor. Yeah, like, that's so all that it they is. Can, I, I, so they can I see off. through you, Chibbers. I see through you. <laughs> I see through your quick little script. I can see it. <laughs> uh, and then they, they they break into the, um, into like the, the drilling place. And then they're like, yo, what's up? And they meet uh, Nazarene and Tony. I got the names up here, so I'm pretty good at that. Yeah. You're Um, so professional. Ah, you know, I'm just doing my research here at the 50% Doctor Who podcast, baby. Crazy. 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 (laughs) Okay. And then, like, there's holes in the floor. They're like, what's going on? Um, They're like, shut off all your drills. And then they're like, if your drills are off, how come we can still hear drilling? And then the holes on the earth start to come out. Boom, 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 boom. Holes, do, holes, do, do, holes, do, holes, do. yeah. Shit, it's Holes the movie, but it's Doctor Who. 4,000 holes in Lancashire, or however, however it goes in uh, day in life. Um, and then they're running away, Tony gets his legs stuck, and Amy's like, I'm going to play hero here and uh, help you. And as he gets pulled out, she gets pulled down, and she gets taken away ah. by the Silurians. Um, is this a thing where, like... If you notice in Chibber's scripts, he always likes to he always likes to separate the companions. Is that a thing that always happens? Well, I, I think that is actually I think a smart move on his behalf because one thing that is quite a common thing, and I guess maybe it's one of the only like proper Chibnallisms that I can think of that you know, um, yes. and RTD kind of you you can tell when it's their episodes. They have a lot of kind of unique things that they do with them. Um, but Chibnall, I, I think his episodes quite often feel like just standard episodes, which is, I guess that's fine. But one thing that he does seem to do quite often is um, he likes big casts, like a big ensemble cast. Yeah. Like, so, like, obviously on his era of the show, he has, you know, the three companions plus the Doctor, um, as well as a few side characters per episode. And then when he's doing, you know, Moffat and RTD scripts, because there's only one or two companions, he adds, like, a bunch of side characters into them, like mm-hmm. all of that crew in 42. And then, you know, this episode, yeah, the there's a whole bunch, you know, there's the kid, the dad, uh, the wife, Nazreen, the granddad, the, and then there's, there's uh, 
you know, uh, dinosaurs in the spaceship. You got oh, all so that crazy people. mix yeah. of cast. I think the only one I can. Th- oh no, uh, yeah, even the Power of Three. You get, you got Brian. Yeah, you got all of Unit comes in, gets yeah. introduced. So Osgood and Kate. Yeah. Um, so he he that's a big Chibnallism, I think, getting big crews, which I think is kind of cool. It's quite fun. Chibnall didn't write any of Peter's era, did he? I don't think he did. No. That's interesting. No, isn't I think it, that Power of Three is his last episode. It's interesting if over. you think about it. Like he didn't write any for Peter Zero, and they were really quick to be like, "We want you to be the mm. new writer." It's an, I, I, I reckon if he didn't write Broadchurch, they wouldn't have even considered him. But that's just me. Um, uh, uh, yes and no, because he'd been so involved in you know he's re- wrote through. Well, I know he did a lot of Torchwood, a few so. different seasons, and then Torchwood as well. He was really heavily involved in so. That's the thing, though. Like, with this episode, when I was watching it, I was like, you know what? I actually don't even mind this. Like, it's quite it's quite simple, but it's def- it was definitely a fun watch. And, again, the, mm. man I loved, the man I loved it as a kid, like, I think if he, like, was doing stuff like this now, where it's like, ah, like, it's not the best, but it's fun, I would really like his era. But there's just this mm. look about season 11 and 12. I know it's the best of shows ever looked, but it's like, it's this weird color tone. I just don't fuck with it. Like, I don't, there's something yeah, about it. I just, just, I just looks, can't. just looks green. They've been saying yeah. it for a while, and then Josh Nares put a tweet up the other day where he like recolorated it, and he was like, "Oh my god, it's so green!" And yeah, I was like, "Yeah, man, I fucking know." Yeah, it, yeah, like I think, of course, it's like it's a marvel what it is right now. Like, the way the show looks, it does look very nice. But if I was gonna break down how I wanted it to be color corrected, like it's not how I'd do it. But either way, mm. um, for me, yeah, as they well, lose. They lose uh, Amy. Yeah, uh, a, a big thing for me with the new show. Sorry, my my internet just I just got an alert then saying it's un- unstable. So that's fun. Um, yeah, I, I got. We've been lagging a little bit. Um, that's okay. Yeah, it's because I'm hotspotting because my internet in my you're hotboxing. Oh my goodness, I'm hotboxing. That's right. Get in fucking crazy. Four twenty on the fifty percent the fifty percent four twenty podcast. Shit, son. Um, shame. Yeah, no. What I was saying. Uh, what was I saying? God, I have no idea. Um, what were you saying before? Uh, I was saying about how Amy got taken, but color grade. No, color no, grade. before that, color grade, color grading. Oh yeah, what what kills me a little bit is they use anamorphic lenses now, which is why everything is like super narrow depth of field. Everything looks super compressed mm-hmm. uh, in the image, um, and it's like a cinematic look. But I always find it slightly an overly cinematic look, um, and especially for a show like Who, I don't know if I buy into it. But that's just a yeah, that was just a small sidebar. They take Amy. Ah, they oh, do. Karen. Oh, Karen. She is a Karen. Um. Anyway, they're they're like we need to go uh, lock down the town because these 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 creatures, whatever they may be, are coming up mm. the earth. Shit. And, um, Crazy. Not to cut yeah. you off again, but when bruh. Amy, bruh, <laughs> kind of just trying to talk, and I'm like, no thoughts. <laughs> um. I I thought I didn't buy it when Amy was being pulled into the earth. I thought that was a bit. Shit, like, I feel like Matt was just holding his hand and was, like, saying more than he was doing. You know, he was like, hey, Mia, I'll save you. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. But he wasn't, like, physically doing never, anything. Like, I'm never gonna wouldn't you, you go. try and, like, get your hands in there and be like, somebody help me pull her up. But well, he just I'm sorry, Aim. The script needed her to be taken away. All right. I know. It, they Are you okay done, with but that? He just needed to put up a bit more resistance, I think. You gotta. I know it's like it could have been so easy in the script to like have her like get pulled down and then like shout in the doctor's name and like just as he tries to grab her hand, it like just slides down. We wouldn't have yeah. all this like shit where it's like, oh, I could probably pull her up, but it's. I think it was shot well. I don't know how they shot it. I think that's pretty cool how they did it. Um, yeah, no, it's good. Good effect. How they yeah, it looks. Them, it looks really nice. Under. I literally. I swear on my life. I used to play Doctor Who. Like, I'm sure everyone used to do this when they were a kid. I used to play Doctor Who when I was a doctor. And um, mm. because I loved this episode so much, I went into my back garden and dug, like, a massive hole. Um, <laughs> so I could, so I could like, redo that scene in my head. I swear. Well, like, you, you got yourself in a hole and you just started pulling the dirt on. No, and, like, I... D- and I, going below the earth. No, nah, like, it wasn't that deep. It was maybe half a meter deep. And then my parents told me to stop because I might hit some pipes. And it was a rental as well. 
So um, I wasn't meant to dig anything, but it was around the side of the house and I dug a massive hole. And like, no, nah, like I wouldn't really do much. Like, I would never dress up, but I, my auntie sent me Matt's sonic screwdriver. So I would just have that. And I would like run mm. around my back garden, like sonic in the ground being like, there's been Silurians here. Um, I reckon that's pretty cute. Actually. I, I kind of forgot I did that. Little fucking 12 year old Connor being like, mom, Silurians. Mom. Quite- I don't know if it was like 12, maybe that was, Christ. That's quite old to be playing Doctor Who in the garden with peace and love. Um, Yeah, but we've all been there. I don't know, how old were we? 2011 when this came out, so 10 years ago. Yeah, literally 12. (laughs) Yeah, it's about 12 years old. Yeah, I I used to play 2010 when this came out, so maybe maybe, um, 11. Uh, Yeah, I I, I, I used to do it all the time, especially in the UK when I was even younger. Like, I I dead set, I had friends at school, but I would never hang out with them at lunch because there was like this tree at my old school and it looked it was like just a massive tree and I'm like oh that's the TARDIS so I would always go there mm. and like pretend I was in the TARDIS kind of cringe hey, but kind of you... cute god you're just so lame Connor so no, lame I wouldn't say lame I'd say it's cute like I used to like yeah. play next time trailers in my head and like come up with episodes dude David Tennant used to play the Doctor and in like in the playground and look at him he made it so What's so? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Aiden's like moving his camera. I'm like, why are you doing that? And he's trying to show me that he. It's not even like it's not even plugged and screwed to the wall. No, um, we can't in here. Oh, have you got no studs in, in the office? Um, the the office is like it's not brick because it's a separate house. It's kind of like, um, they're like yeah. hollow walls. And- I have put up exactly what you're in right now before Aiden quite a few times it is my job so. fuck me you arrogant bitch well I'm just saying that <laughs> normally there should be there should be studs but probably not if it's like I did literally the exact thing that you're in right now I did one of those last year like a huge renovation and stuff but yeah it's it's, mm. it's hard to plug and screw if there's no like anything in there to like plug and screw to so but I appreciate you putting it up Aiden that's very sweet and kind of you yeah it's up there it's lovely no it's sweet and kind of you to buy it in the yeah, first boys. place how about it that? It took fucking ages. Simping. You don't really, you don't really owe me any like thanks because it took so fucking long to give it to you. <laughs> no, no, it was, it was still a lovely surprise. That, that lovely, we're talking about that lovely poster Connor bought me. I don't so, know how um, you didn't yeah. know it was that. It was like so obvious. I had a bit of an assumption, uh, but I, I, I wasn't fully aware. I kind of had a feeling it was to do with the image, um, but I was like, maybe it's on a mug or something. I don't know. A mug. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Just the fucking Here's mug. A mug. <laughs> you just throw it at the wall. This is fucking shit. I want to get some mugs. It's like, shit it's house. so weird. Like, you know, I think I mentioned it last night. I was like, oh, this is my podcast. Because they were asking me about Doctor Who. Oh, this is my podcast. I was like, yeah, I got I got that in a frame once. I was like, that, that does sound a bit vain, to be honest. Getting a photo of yourself mm. in a frame. That, that's why I gave it to Maybe, Aiden. I think, I think I have to buy you one. I think it's vain if you buy yourself one. You have to There's buy me one, cute. you cutie. It's fine. Yeah, do that. I'll get you cutie. on a mug. Yeah, <laughs> get the mugs and shit. Like, oh, uh, Dan's Dan's uh, kind of teased something today for the hundredth episode we're filming. He said I got something to do with the show, so that'd be interesting to see what that is. I don't, I don't know what it is, but I do want to get one of both. So I'll get one of both and put them in my room. Um, again, a bit vain, but it is what it is. Any shiz, probably should keep rattling on. Um. I like yeah, the scene where uh, I like the scene where Rory confronts the doctor and says like, "It's like where's Amy?" And it's like I'm gonna get her back. Mm. It's like I tried to save her. And he's like, "Well, you should have tried harder," which is literally what yeah, you were just good. saying. Like, he didn't really try that hard to grab her, and yeah. no one else really helped Eva. <laughs> well, you should have tried know, harder. <laughs> and like literally, there's all these houses around, and no one is there. There's not a single oh, extra. Fine, there's not even a. There's not even a postman walking around the streets is just going to get killed for to show how evil the uh, the the aliens are this week. Um, Dude, it's crazy. Anyway, I love how I used to love this as a kid. How like the Silurians put like a shield around the town, and then like the Doctor gets a slingshot out and fires it at the the sky, and then they make the uh, they block the clouds and it goes dark. I thought that was awesome. Mm. I really liked that. I always loved yeah. that. I tried to look and it was noticeable in one scene. Um, bit of a goof, I guess, which I'll say now. Um, obviously, because they had to do, they had to shoot one scene in the day and one scene at night, but it's technically the same scene in the episode. I was trying to look for, um, just like, just like you know, like continuity. Oh yeah. 
errors because obviously they'd be in the same it's they'll be in like the same spot but then like i noticed one time like arthur diver's hair was like in his face a little bit and then it was like a bit back and same with matt it was meant to be the same scene but there was obviously different shooting days so ridiculous, ridiculous. that's probably something you would like edit out of the tardis wiki tardis uh, wiki yeah the, yeah the shit goofs that they give us sometimes um yeah that whole nighttime effect really cool um and i actually i actually think it created a really spooky atmosphere like when yeah when um they're like running up to the church and later on when the kid goes out on his own yeah um, and you see like it the slurring just like run past the camera it's building up to like you know what do they look like what what creatures are they and it's kind of cool but genuinely like a spooky vibe they've got like big fog blowing through the scenes which creates like awesome atmosphere there's times where um I think it's so obvious that there's just a fog machine behind a gravestone because it's just like there's fog nowhere else in some of the shots. Nah, and it's, it's just, just me vaping out from behind. It's just one. me vaping in the uh, in the in the it's just the, kind of vaping in the graveyard. No, I agree. It's like that's it's how you can of, get onto a set, saving money. Literally. They don't need a um, don't need just a like Connor take a big Connor take a big hit of vape. Um, <laughs> no, I thought I agree. That scene was awesome, and I think it was really shot like a horror film, which I loved. Like you're right with the mm. silo and going like like you know just running across yeah. like the master in the end of time. Yeah, <laughs> scared <laughs> just runs across. Um, I did like before the before the scene where um Elliot gets taken in the graveyard. It made me laugh how like I like how um he's dyslexic so he couldn't write anything down. Chibnall loves to have people who have like these issues and he like makes to try and sympathise them because mm. they have like dyslexia and stuff, which is fine. But like they don't really go anywhere with it. The same with Ryan with his like that thing he had where he can't really yeah that's right yeah i'm fine with representation i think it's great but just do it well because like this gets brought up for like no reason and like somehow the kid draws like a picasso drawing of the entire town they have like five minutes and he draws (laughs) this most intense and it's colored and all labeled and uh it looks great but i'm like how the hell did you do that so quickly and then like the silurians are coming up in a minute and then Elliot's like, I'm going to go get my head fired. The doctor's like, yeah, go ahead. It's like, what? Why right now would you choose to go? And also, why would the doctor... I know they're trying to show that he's distracted, but are you serious? This man who's like constantly on top of everything and is the smartest person in the room, let the kid just go and walk off? I know it's like trying mm. to show the doctor doesn't really think about that kind of stuff, but like... It's stupid. Yeah. I didn't like it. I thought it was dumb. What are you thinking at this point about um, uh, what's she called the uh, the mum? The mum is is Ambrose. Ambrose, well, yeah, what a very annoying character. Point? <laughs> very annoying yeah? character. I didn't get her like, especially in the second part. Like, I understand where like she's coming from, uh, but I think like it's just just written so annoyingly, and like mm. I, I understand where she's coming from, but like if she had just sat back and thought for a second about her actions, like. It just everything bad that happens in the episode is, is mostly just just due to her action. Yeah, well, I I kind of remembered her just being like a straight up bitch for the most part, which she she Jesus. you know kind of is. Um, but I watched, well, yeah, watching part one, I actually I don't know, I I actually thought she was quite good in it, and I, I found her quite um, relatable and not relatable, but um, I understood her reasoning behind things a lot. Second part, I think they get carried away with turning her into like this. This, yeah. this kind of baddie um, when, when she like kills spoilers the Silurian and stuff like that but yeah. um, I actually was surprised that I did enjoy her in part one yeah I look, I don't hate her character I think the whole point was that you were supposed to have the reaction that I did um, yeah and I thought the portrayal was, was fine like there was nothing wrong with that uh, I it's just Karen yeah. yeah yeah that's a really good way of describing it Again, it's like why mm. does like why could ugh, it's like why is like the the female characters always got to be the most like oh we're gonna we're gonna screw everything up and then like Amy's mm. written to be yeah. like Amy in this episode that she's just like she's written to be this like this like oh I gotta be careful with my words here like kind of like oh god is it bad to say a bit slaggy but like literally there's a scene where Daisy ah good cat now nah, like. Like, there's a scene where, like, um, Rory is, like, calling her, like, they, they there's, like, a trans, there's, like, a, uh, a transmission from the bottom of the earth to the top of the earth, and it's, like, um, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna talk to them, and then, like, Rory finally sees that Amy's still alive, and it's, like, Amy, you're still alive, and then, like, Amy's first response is, like, 
oh god you're a bit clingy aren't you rory it's like what (laughs) what is this dialogue amy wouldn't say that like it's such a it's Mm. like they were kind of just written to be that way i think um the the only one character that they kind of nail really in that sort of way is um nazarene nazarene Um, i think yeah i think i think her character was really good it was like that's the thing like um when when she was when she wasn't written you know as a as a female character when she wasn't written to be just like awful I, yeah. I did like her character a lot. Did you? I know it's kind of like skipping to the end, but do you know how like at the end they're like because like she stays down there with with uh, with um, with Tony. You know, mm. they're like come visit me again. I wonder if I wonder if uh, Chibnall will go and revisit them at some point. I don't think he will. <laughs> but what if he does another Silurian episode? Because aren't they supposed to be in it? What if they rocked up? That'd be pretty cool if they just rocked up. It's like, well, hey, guys, when did the Silurian? Silur- what the fuck? Where did the Silurians come from? What are they in the new series? When they rumored to be in it. Maybe I'm just fucking with myself. No, so far, all the rumours, it's uh, Zygons, Autons, obviously Weeping Zygons. Angels, um, and some Tarans, which are obviously in it as well. But the Auton one, I finally found out why everyone was talking about Autons, by the way, why everyone thinks it's in it, was because someone took a photo of a bus one day, and it had a poster on it for, like, Autons, just, like, some kind of thing. Um, and everyone thinks, oh... Auton it must have been for filming Doctor Who. Autons. Ah stupid. Weiss men. Um Well another thing that really took me out of the episode is like when um when like they go back to the church and then um Ambrose is like, Oh where's where's uh where's Elliot? And it's like, Oh I just let him go. It's like, What why? You let him go, what's up? And then you see Elliot mm. get taken. And then, like they're just like they're just like before Elliot like bangs on the church door and says like let me in mum they're just all standing around like oh my this oh, I can't believe he's got he's got it's like <laughs> run out there what are we gonna do like, Where is everyone's he? just standing around like are you telling me that this mother wouldn't and this and the the grandfather none of them would the doctor none of them would run out and try and help him like the four there's like this shot with Elliot like smashing on the church door literally there's a shot of two seconds of everyone just going like I can't what the she is. it's like we what up. just run out yeah then she's like well he's dead i guess like you're telling me your son is out there and like i would literally i would use some bolt out that door and try and find my son slash daughter um mm. anyway they do eventually run out and elliot gets taken and then like uh the southern and johnson ambrose and then tony grabs it off off of her and then the little the little, the little tongue comes out and little, 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 <laughs> that's weird Smacks on the neck. It's like, ah! And then, uh, yeah, <laughs> gets poisoned. And yeah. uh, the doctor goes out <laughs> with, like, these sunglasses on, which I thought was funny. And it shows That's the hot blood, cold blood. I thought that was really cool. I like that. Mm. And he really suits them. You know, I'm like, ooh, Sonic Sonic sunglasses. Am I right, folks? Am I dun, right? Dun, dun. Am I right, folks? I do like how um, the doctor was trying to trap the Silurian. And the way they do it is that the Mills on Wheels van... And then Rory mm. runs out going, ah! <laughs> and <he> just <laughs> grabs the Zyler and throws it into the Mills on Wheels van. And then the, the sun comes back out again. It's no longer dark. Again, I did notice a few tiny little continuity errors when it went from the day to the day. Aiden is shaking his head right now Ridiculous. at me saying, Connor, stop what, talking you, about that. Tardis Wiki? I'm Tardis Wiki right now. I can be <laughs> edited by anyone. Um, uh. Christ, uh, we got a fucking finish on this episode well, it's pretty much done anyway um they're like that's it i'm gonna go down the earth i do like how uh nazarene's like this is my life's work i want to come down with you i really believed her character she's probably one of the only characters in the episode i actually kind of really dug like i mm. believe that she would want to go down and uh and figure out what's going on i do like how the tardis didn't even move the earth just collapsed and the tardis is like falling down that yeah, was pretty yeah. cool i like that and yeah, you can see cool. from the little camera outside the tardis that they were just falling through the dirt um mm. i guess the final thing to really talk about um, apart from Amy meeting Mo down there and about to get dissected, the only other thing to really talk about is like they obviously see the the army of Silurians. But what did you think about the set design? Because I thought it looked really cool. I like they put a lot of effort into like the uh, under the earth type thing. Yeah, I thought that was awesome. Yeah, I think it looks. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, nothing more to say. I think it just looks fucking great. And just just the the CGI yeah. of the city was a bit bit shit, but um, the actual yeah, production there's, design of there's... the sets was awesome. <laughs> There's one shot in the second part right near the end where they're all running across a bridge and it looks yes. awful. Ooh, it looks, mama. They're like, 
like it's so obviously just like a green screen in the background they're all just like running across the yeah, bridge yeah. uh happy days uh anyway that's the end of part one Boom. Yeah, well, what, what did you Done. think of all the dissection scenes? Because I, I don't think Amy had much to do in the episode at all. That was kind of all she did. She just kind of sit there and was like, ah, oh, no. Ah. Uh, I don't know. Like, uh, I, it, again, yeah, I don't think she had much to do at all. Um, again, I think she was written to be this annoying, loud character who doesn't really care about anyone. And that's not who Amy is. That's not why we like Amy. Like, I, I think she was just, ri- again, all the lines of Rory is like, Oh, a bit clingy, aren't you? It's like this is your boyfriend who really cares about you and you love. Like, Fiance, what about all your development you had in the last episode, which was just done so well? Hmm. They're not married yet, Aiden. Almost. Almost. Almost isn't married, though, is it? <laughs> mm-hmm. no. uh, do you want to do good for the week? Yep, let's do it. All right, let's move on to Australia's favorite segment, everybody. It's time for good for the week. So we'll be covering Go for the Week for both parts of the episode right now. Um, we just like to put it in the middle of two parts just to shake it up so we're not just rattling on um, about our thoughts for, for an hour and a bit. Um, Connor, do you have any goofs that you personally found other than what you've discussed? Why, Aiden, I already told you. The continuity errors. Uh, <laughs> nah, that's it. That's damn, what you, son. That's all I've got. That's I've got, I got one. Um, I don't know if it's like, oh, sorry, about a yawn. Fuck me. Uh, I literally barely slept at all this week. So if I sound really unentertaining, unent- that that's why. You do. Um, so, great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Just what I wanted to hear. Good, good. Um, that, all right. So, uh, you know these, you know Carly's crack that keeps appearing? Yeah, in the Carly's crack. Carly's crack. Yep. Um, Carly's so crack. So, there is... You know, I don't know, because the the light, they always talk about the light, you know, it erases things that it touches and stuff. Um, I don't know if I fully understand it, because, like, there's, there's, like, a, the, the light is shining a light of the crack on the floor, right? Before the actual beams, like, before they start to CGI the beams, just the practical effect they have of the light is shining, like, the light of the crack on the floor. Um, plus, the Doctor then runs up to it, puts his hand into it um, and takes out a piece of the TARDIS, which is cool, and we'll get to that. But mm-hmm. surely, like, shoving his hand into it, at least that's going to erase him, you know? Like, let alone the fact that he walks, like, over the light of the crack. Is that... Is that... Am I, yeah? He I pulls know. out his hand, and it's no longer there, and he looks down and goes, that's right, I never had a hand. I, yeah. <laughs> 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 <That's> <laughs> fucking good. I, t- I kind of get what you're saying though yeah because like that's the whole point of them not being able to take rory because they're like the lights already touched him it's too late yeah, exactly he's been Whoa. erased there's nothing you can do about it mm. fair enough yeah you no know i just remembered then what at the end of the lodger um the crack gets really big doesn't it it just like expands does that mean like yeah doesn't it doesn't um, it open well, almost craig's yeah, like opens or something. Does that mean like Craig's uh, kitchen never happened? <laughs> like he walks down to like make some breakfast and is like, oh, where's my kitchen? Oh, it's fine. Didn't where's have my one. fridge? <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Literally though, like, oh God, it's so silly. It's true though. I don't know. Like I, I think funny. to the extent of like, I think it's just like the the light that came out and touched Rory. I think that's what they're going for. But I do get mm. sticking your hand in is like definitely pushing it a little bit. I do think they kind of contradicted themselves a little bit because it's like Amy's like, I remember those soldiers who went into the light and I remember them, even though they disappeared. And they were kind of just like, no, 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 this is part yeah. of your own history. So, you know, it was like, oh, I feel like they kind of had to write around that where it's like. Yes, I, I actually remember having that thought whilst I watched it. Yeah. I was like, this this Rory thing just sounds like an excuse. Like they just need to make yeah. forget. But at the same time, it's like, Maybe they, maybe Amy can just, have, oh no, because she needs to remember the cracks, so it is hard. But wait, how the cracks are also Amy's history, though. So surely she shouldn't be able to remember the cracks in general. Yeah, now nah, you know exactly. That's what I was thinking. Like it kind of contradicted everything. Um, 
Also, don't you hate yeah. when TV shows treat their audiences like they're fucking stupid? Like, how many times when we see the crack, it cuts to 11th hour, like, it's like the crack in my bedroom wall. <laughs> and it goes, two points, of, two points of space of time that never should have touched. It's like, how many times? It's like, we get it. We knew where it was from. I get it, though. Don't fucking show us it. If you're, if you're just watching... If you're just watching this episode, it's kind of like so. uh, someone's going to be like, "What the fuck is this climax? Like, what's this crack they're talking about? What what Carly's Carly, crack? Carly's crack doing here?" Um, so I kind of get it. Like, they're trying to uh, not uh, what's the name? What's the word? Alienate the the casual viewer. But consider yeah, myself still a bit crazy. alienated. Okay. Oh fuck. Nah, I get it though. Um, all right. Let's move on to some of TARDIS wiki stuff. Throughout the episodes, Amy's earrings disappear and reappear. Hey, what's scenes. up? Hey. Um, when Rory's at the grave, um, in like different shots, he's standing like completely differently. Like he's got his arms down in some shots and in some shots he's got his hands on his hips. Continuity. So that's a bit funny. Yeah. I love how you notice like the slight differences in hair. <laughs> but, but if it's like a full that. body <laughs> move, you don't notice <laughs> oh, it. Oh, that's funny. Um... And then when Amy's trying to remember Rory at the end, and and she's like thinking hard, and she's like Rory, um, and it's doing all like the flashbacks of, of Rory. It, it's kind of weird that the majority of it is just her and Rory traveling, and then there's just like two shots that they went out and shot of them just like before that, and it's so obvious they put like no effort into that stuff. But uh, anyways, when when Amy's trying to remember Rory, he it uses the clip where he gets shot again. Um, uh. by the laser but in that shot um, there's no laser he just like reacts yeah I noticed just, like, that the when he there's that yeah it. when they're showing the shots of uh, yeah so I totally I totally noticed that as well when he goes ah there's like no laser shooting him I yeah, yeah true there there's there's a goof I could have fucking realised well you didn't get it bitch let's move on to part two quickly son go on Go on. Oh, do I have to lead it? They walk into the alien city. Oh, I thought I thought you the were. Solarian I thought you city. were. That was for both of the goose of the week. Okay, I get you. All right. You ready? What are you talking about? I what thought. You, sorry, I thought I thought you were still going on the goose. So I thought you were saying when they walk into the alien city, you're about to say a goof about that. But uh, yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, baby, let's go. All right. So yeah, we walk into the alien city. They're like, bro, this is insane. And then we cut to uh, we cut to Amy. He she like pit pockets the fucking Silurian doctor somehow. <laughs> I don't know how because her like arms are like completely locked down. Um, but still, is what it is. Um, they escape on their way out. Uh, Mo and Amy see Elliot, who's still in like the chamber and stuff. Uh, back at mm. back up um, back up near the church, they're like, "Lo, we're going to talk to this uh, Silurian." There's whole thing going on about how Tony has now been infected by the poison from Alea. The yeah, the it's just like just plot for the ending, you know. Like I, I don't, I don't really care for it. I gotta say though, the 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 prosthetics for the Silurians is is really good. Fucking great. They man. look amazing. Not just good. It's it's yeah, top tier cosmetic shit, and like it looks so great. Like when they use it on Vastro in, in future episodes, like it just continuously looks great. Doesn't date at all. Yeah, so that's the thing though. Like the actress who plays, um, Alea. Yeah, like there's two. She plays two characters, which is really weird. And I think they're going for, I think they're going for the idea that Silurians are kind of like a clone race almost. Because like she's played by she plays two different people in the episode. Did you notice that? I think it's just like, they all kind of look pretty similar. Like from memory, there's a Silurian doctor in um, Dinosaurs in a Spaceship. And it's the exact same. Um, I think he looks very similar as well. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's it's a clone race, but I just think, you know, you look at a bunch of lizards and they all kind of look the same, you know? Um, yeah, I think they're but, going for that. But also well. I think Neve is just like so great in, in, in playing a Silurian that they were just like, oh, it's got to be her. And to be honest, like, I think... They do look a bit different. I didn't wasn't actually hundred percent sure it was Neve until the credits rolled. Credits rolled. I don't know why. Yeah, I but, get that. Yeah. Um, they escape. They go down. The doctor's like, "What's up?" Um, there's like I said, there's all this, there's all this stuff in the church, and this is when like Ambrose comes in and like has the uh, has the taser, and it's like, "Look, you mm. know, if you don't bloody help my dad, I'm gonna shoot you." 
And it's like, ah, no, you won't. You won't. I'm calling your bluff. <laughs> dead. <Yeah>. Dead. <laughs> Aiden, dead. But I do like the scenes down on the earth for like, sorry, down in the earth where like, you know, they recoup with Amy and stuff and like, what's up? And then, um, old mate comes out. He's pretty much like the, the mayor of, why well, got your hand up? What, you need to ask a question? Cause I want to say something. Go on. I thought I'd put my hand up. That's my alert. when I'm like, I want to cut in rather than cutting you off. Um, the death scene of, of Alea fucking really good. Mm. I thought like, the fact, like, she was in, like, so much pain and, and shit, like, for me, I was like, that's dark. Like, quite often in Who, I think, to maybe get around, make it a bit more of a family show, pains are simple, quick. Pain. Um, and only, they're only, like, painful when they're kind of specifically used for a point. Um, and this was just one that I was like, shit, that felt, you know, that felt real. It seems like she had a really painful death. Um, and that's, yeah, just cool, I thought. Yeah. Um, I thought that was good. I get that. And it's like, it had to work the way it did. Cause like, that was the whole bargaining chip in a way where like, we've got your prisoners, you got ours. Mm. Like, you know, it's like, they both had like people that they could like bargain with. Um, I really like the idea of like, you know, the idea that the Silurians were on earth. And I think it was going for a bit of a, uh, a bit of a message of like, you know, when like, you know, like for example, like Aboriginals in Australia were like the, you know, the, they were like the the people who were in Australia first. I kind of get that what they were trying to go for with the Silurians. Like these were the people that are here first, and then others invaded. Mm. And they're like, "Well, this is our place." It's like just because you were here, you know, just because you're here now doesn't mean it was always yours. Like this was always ours. Like the Silurians. I like that yeah. kind of like what they were trying to go I for. I do with like that. yeah, all of that like political stuff was really good. I thought, and mm. I, I thought it raised some great points, and was just like I thought some really entertaining television. Just seeing how like yeah these two completely different yet completely similar races um are trying to like come to a conclusion i like that the doctor's like this could be the beginning of something and he's so excited for it he's mm. like you know this is this is step one in, in the future of humanity and amy's like but there is no aliens in the future like you know it doesn't get invaded and he's like well ti- time can be rewritten this specific point can can be rewritten and stuff so yeah um i thought that was cool it reminded me a lot of um day of the doctor where like you know the not even just Day of the Doctor, like, the Zy- Zygon Inversion and Zygon Invasion, where, like, they had to, like, deal with just the, Zy- the sorry, the Zygons having, living on Earth and stuff, and how they're going to live on Earth and how it's going to yeah. work. Um, and they kind of just... That's just, cool. That's right, because like, it's in Day of the Doctor, isn't it? It's like, um, Z- Zygons and humans, they had that chat about how the Zygons can live on Earth. Um, so, yeah, it reminded me of that. I do... What I found mm. hilarious is, like... Um, go ahead. I was just going to say, there's a moment just before that, as that political thing's happening. can't remember specifically what's said, but I think Nazarene says something, not bad, but she says something that was like, um, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know. She says something maybe slightly negative towards sharing the earth or something. And the doctor's like, Nazarene, come on, be, like be the best of the humanity. Be you're, the you're, best you're better than this here. or, or you're something. You're better than that. Um, and And it's just like, the fact that I just believed Matt so much and it just like, if he came and he said that to me, I'd be like, fuck yeah, you know, let's get it. Let's fucking get the dogs, mate. Let's, let's, let's win. You're like, yes, Matt, you're right. Whatever. You're right. Um, he's just very convincing. Um, Matt's really great. I literally, uh, just watched Vincent before coming on here. Vincent and the dog. No shit. I haven't seen it yet. Um, yeah, no, just cause, uh, yeah, I don't think I'll have time. Uh, by the way, uh, Shooting Monday, 7 p.m. Zave's going to be there. This Monday at 7 p.m. Get ready, folks. Well, that's when we're shooting it. Oh, foot cramp. Ah, 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 <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Barefoot on the moon. Oh. Cramp in the foot, mate. Cramp in the foot. What are you going to do? Ah. What are you going to do when they come for you? Have a sore foot. All right. I think we're good. Any shares? I think we're good. Um, I'm just going to like- cradle my foot for a bit. Do you like how it made me laugh so much? It like was so obvious. Do you like how the uh, the Silurians like call up to Earth, but it's they the the way they call through is like on some fucking, it's like on some TV that's not even plugged in. Yeah, that's odd. That that's a bit Mad. silly. The what I laughed at a lot was how dramatic 
the the cameraman for the Silurians was. Yeah, it like, like zooms it out. It's like this really tight close yeah. up. And, boom. and then she's like, we have hostages too. Boom. Boom. Uh, like just, but what? oh, what's the word? Like they, oh, why can't I think of it? Um, but they just like zoom out so fast. Aid in the um, film. Oh, crash zoom. Mark. They do a crash zoom out and it just like reveals everything so quick. Boom. And then the way like from there, it's like quickly panning in and like zooming in onto different parts at a certain point. Such a dramatic cameraman. Loved it. Hilarious. Slogan's man. They've got their cinematography sorted. Amy, you're still alive. Oh, clingy march. I hate that. Mm-hmm. I hate that <laughs> line so much. Poor, yeah. poor Rory. That's it. Poor Rory. Hmm. Any shares. Uh, they're like, yo, where's our bargaining ship? And they're like, here it is. She's dead. And I, I like it. I think it's a, Definitely. I think it's a cool like concept. Like, I think the idea of that is pretty sick. Like the idea they had this, like yeah. they had this bargaining ship and then it all went, it all just went to hell instantly. Like the idea of like, they had this mm. thing and then now they don't. And the doctor's like, you were the, the best of humanity, but they don't know that yet. Like they're obviously they're like, oh, we're going to come down. They go in the pods and they bring them down. And that's the scene where they come down and they actually show them. I like it. Uh, the doctor's like, mm. don't tell me you did this. Like, I like it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good. And it, uh, it's great how the whole way through, like the first act of the episode, you can so see where it's going and you're like, oh, they're going to make progress. And then every time it, it cuts to, you know, the church, you're kind of like, Shit, yeah, don't we, do it, mate. Don't do yeah, it. <laughs> you know that that exact thing is going to happen that they don't know about down there yet. Mm. And it kind of like sparks a war. The The Silurian doctor gets shot, which was sad, sad days. Um, the big sad. Big sad. And um, the doctor's like, the doctor's sonic screwdriver suddenly becomes like a gun disabler. It's like, psst. You know how that is that? It's like, what? Sure, yeah, is what it is, I guess. <laughs> all right, they all run. They all run into like that control room, and they put Mo onto the bed, and it's like, look, we can save him, but it's going to take years. It's like, look, maybe we're not ready to like work with humans yet. I'm sorry, I thought we were, and it's like, yeah, so did I. Sorry about that. Um, the whole thing doesn't really get solved in a way. Like, there's this massive timer because they're going to blow up the because uh, Chibnall loves a the timer. They're going to blow up the whole of the upstairs of the fucking the mining thing. And they leave Mo down there, uh, which I thought was good with uh, with with Nazarene. Is that correct? Yeah, with Nazarene. I thought that was really cool. Mm. And Nazarene actually says, "Come visit us sometime." I reckon Chibnall might just show them for like a second. <laughs> Maybe I don't know, but why not? Don't you think? Like as we're getting through this episode. Oh yeah, two points. One, um, I love the you know we we're talking about the production design. Every time they run through the city, and there's like a few parts where I think they obviously must have shot in like some kind of like a uh, bio space or or some kind of thing where there's like there was like little bits of water running through and you could hear it. And I thought that was really awesome. Yeah. Um, I love the yellow lighting. I thought that was really cool under there. Um, second thing, you know, we're almost at the end of this episode, right? And I'm like, fuck, we're, we're rushing over this, skipping through things. But I'm just like, we're kind of not. There's not really yeah. much happening in this part. Well, that's what I'm going to stand up now because my ass is going to sleep. Um, that's what I was saying before. Um, I kind of felt like... I did kind of feel like this episode for part two, like not a lot happened, but it was just so quick paced that it felt like a lot did, but there was not really a lot of meat on the bones in that sense. But yeah, yeah. Um, I, it's like, we're going to go upstairs and the whole thing's going to blow up. Like the whole uh, mining thing's going to blow up. But then just as they're about to run away into the TARDIS, Rory gets shot. So ah, he's dead. Me. Did this send you Nazarene? as a kid? Yeah, not Nazarene. The... Some, someone else. Nazarene. <laughs> no, Nazarene. No, no, Nazarene. Nazarene's a Silurian. Silurian. I can't think of what the... The Silurian that kills her. Yeah, kills him. Um, what? Go on. Did that just send you as a kid? Where, like, you got to see... You're like, oh my god, Rory died. And we didn't know who was going to come back. Rory died, like... Rory, death count number two. Literally, death count number two. Not really mid-season anymore, but kind of, kind of, like near the later half of the season, but like still quite fresh into the season. He's like, he's Just dead. It's like on a random episode. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Did, did you, that kind of like send you? Because that was like crazy as a kid for me. Crazy as a coconut. What yeah. does that mean? I don't really remember, honestly. Like, I, I don't remember how I how I felt about that. I was like, I don't give I a really fuck. really don't. I think series six is where my strong memories of watching the show kind of pick up. Um, Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. 
Um, not really much else to say. Uh, Amy forgets Rory. I thought both performances from Matt and Karen were sensational. Really great really stuff. Great. I do like how the... Um, there's also... You go. <laughs> I do like how um, <laughs> the family conveniently, like, goes and, like, mowing stuff, like, going to the TARDIS. And, like, they conveniently run up the corridor. So, they go somewhere for some reason. That's why, like, when, yeah. when Amy comes in the doctor and she's, like, crying and shit, like, I don't want to forget him. And then she does. Like, the mm. family then just come running out the TARDIS corridor. And it's like, yeah, hey, yeah. We, we just walked off and for a like, second conveniently. You literally the first person ever to run into the TARDIS and not just stay in the console room. Wow, like that's what it's everyone does when they to run in the TARDIS. Exactly. Crazy. Let's let's explore it. Run now, go. Yeah, right, let's go right now. As everyone as we're trying to stop a fucking whole thing from blowing up. Like outside mm. it blows Speaking up. Speaking of blowing up, the doctor then pulls out the shard of the TARDIS out of the, the crack. You know, obviously this is just before they went into the TARDIS. Um and you don't know it. You don't know what it is, right? And then, at the end, bang. It's a shard of the TARDIS. And he puts it on there. Great cliffhanger. Great cliffhanger. Yeah, it is good. Is that is that the end of talking about it now? Is that... I guess. I don't know. Why are you smiling? You got a funny okay. smile on your face. Yeah, because you, I thought you said I pulled the shard out of the crack. But you said shard. But it sounded like you were saying shard. <laughs> you know, when like, you shit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> i'm so mature that's not what i said um but <laughs> but yeah part two even though there's not a lot to say i think it is quite enjoyable it is. and these performances the way it ends the whole like last act is really great um with all nazarene and stuff staying down on earth and then rory dying amy crying amy forgetting um amy lying there's, amy the, crying. the thing blows up yeah mm. and then uh Happy days. Don't really remember what happens to the, to the other side characters, the, the main family. They literally just kind of walk off like, see ya. Oh, the Doctor has a chat and it's actually really beautifully shot um, in the arches with, with Am, Am, Ambos, Am, 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 Ambrose. Uh, Ambrose, yeah. That, and that, that was quite nice. Um, but yeah, yeah. And, but then, yeah. and then that's it. Not much to rig off. Um, really excited to watch Vincent mm. and the Doctor. But yeah. Ooh-wee. Oh we yeah you got you've got a day or so to do it so yeah I can watch it Sunday there you go banging pain fucking good one um pain shall we move on to Australia's second favorite segment let's do it baby it's time for behind the scenes <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa okay so Matt Smith you know that man. You know that he was like 26 when he was playing the Doctor? Shat Smith, yep. Well, guess what? He turned 27 during the filming. That's right, my man. Wow, you've read the facts already. Happy birthday to Um, you. To you. So, the, um, you know, quite often, you know, with every part of filmmaking, the the first cut is always the longest cut and you trim it down from there. That's why, you know, everyone's always like, uh, like Rachel Talalo always says, you know, that there was a 90 minute, 90, uh, uh, twice upon a time was originally 90 minutes um, there's a chance that that was all just like just filler shit that was just like things running too long and stuff so it, it, that's not like a, a proper Rachel Solelli cut that exists out there that's 90 minutes you know that's just part of the process of the editing. Schneider cut um, but this apparently the sort of first like proper cut where they had cut out quite a bit of the of the shit for, for part one I think was 60 minutes long Wow. So they still had to cut out like another 15 minutes of stuff. Yeah, fair enough. So that's a lot of fun. Um, so Mo and Amy, this is like a Gareth Roberts kind of thing. Mo and Amy, when they're in the um, the dissecting thing, yeah, uh, they were apparently supposed to be stripped down to their underwear. Wait, so Amy would have been like her undies and shit. Yeah. Fair enough. What was, uh, what was Trippers thinking about Karen? God. <laughs> Goodness me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't oh, know. Dear. Um, this is actually a really fun thing. Probably not relevant. Well, it's relevant, but probably not actually to do with this episode at all. But, you know, it could be. So, in Doctor Who and the Silurians, which is a... I think it's the first appearance of them, um, Sir John Pertwee. Mm-hmm. Another tribe of Silurians had gone into hibernation, intending to be revived 50 years later. That episode was made in 1970. And the ep- and this episode was set exactly fifty years later in twenty twenty. Wow! So people thought it was going to so, be like a 
Well, it, it makes sense for it to be, but the Doctor says it's a different tribe. The other thing as well was the episode was made in that. 1970, and most of the time, um, those episodes, I think, usually were set around the time of broadcast, but I don't know much about it, but I've heard it mentioned a lot. There's this thing called the unit dating controversy, where the unit episodes, I don't know, they the date the dates that the episodes take place like don't make sense or something like it, it's kind of fucked it, it's like how uh, Ru- uh, uh russell wrote himself into a corner with um every christmas episode or every episode set on earth or something in his era after aliens of london had to be set a year uh later than it yeah. actually was because yeah because yeah. that, they that was so silly wasn't it yeah mm. yeah I get that. Oh well. Um, yeah. Oh no. One more. One more thing. Um, mm-hmm. The doctor and I, I actually totally forgot, and I never even considered this. But now that this fact is here, um, I actually recognise it quite a lot. The doctor holds the sonic screwdriver vertically upright to disarm the Silurians, reminiscent of the older sonic screwdriver models. Because a lot of the time with the older ones, they just hold it upright. They don't do the pointy stuff that they do with um, that David and Chris do, um, and, and everyone else. In yeah. The new series. Um, he was last seen to hold it like this in Utopia. Um, so, in Confidential, Matt Smith stated the Sonic isn't a weapon, so he didn't point it at the weapons to disarm them, which I think was a good good choice of acting, I think. Fair enough. So, we move on to... I did not notice that, but it is what it is. There you go. So, we move on to Australia's third favourite segment, Connor. Let's go, baby! Time for just Twitter things. <laughs> Yeah, baby. You can go first, All mate. All right, so we're going to read out everyone's thoughts on the Hungry Earth and Cold Blood. So I got a couple here on Twitter. Um, we got Dylan. Um, he says, I really don't care for this two-parter at, at all. One of my least favorite Chibnall scripts. The side characters aren't likable enough for me to care about them. The main cast carry the episode. I do like Nazreen, though. Yeah, Nazreen's a champ. I feel like she could have been a nice companion for Eleven. The ending of Cold Blood did shock me at the time, and it works for the overall story, so I guess that's cool. I don't know, question mark. It doesn't really have... A, I don't really have any opinions. Five out of ten. There we go. Um, Bro. Then we have Jack Everett, who I believe this is his first time uh, commenting on the show. Um, he says, I'm sorry, I really don't like this one. It's derivative of the Doctor and the Silurians and offers no new ideas. The supporting characters are cliched and unlikable, and the Silurian redesign is awful. They look way too human. I get that because they they look really not human in the uh, in the classic series. But I actually I, I do really like this design. A bit different, so I'm not, yeah. I'm not against it. He says this is actually my least favorite ever. Whoa! Wow! Three out of ten. Wow! Damn, there's a lot of hate for this app. Yeah, shit, son. What have you got? That that's me. Okay, I haven't got much like at all. Um, I think I got two reviews. I might be wrong, but yeah. Uh, here we go. All right. Uh, no, actually, that's weird. Okay, so I've got I got two I got two um I got two Doctor's Dens, but I think I only got one review because Dylan. I must be mistaken. Dylan sent me his Doctor's Den idea, but I don't think he sent me. Yeah, he didn't send me a review for the episode, which is well. That's because he did it on Twitter. I know, but normally he gives me a little bit of a, a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a nab or something. But well, not this time. That's a shame. Anyway, um, I got one review. Thank you, Jacob. Episode review. These episodes are just average. First episode ends on a uh, uninteresting cliffhanger. Rory dies again, and the scene where Amy forgets him is well performed. The makeup department do a great job. The Silurians for our ten. My question for you: What's the best and worst Doctor Who cliffhanger? That's a good one. Um. Oh. Oh god, that these, is good, isn't it? These, yeah, good one. These fucking love, questions. Love these, love these, me. man. Thanks for doing them. Oh god. Um, oh god. I think one of the best ones. I always think from fuck. Sorry, from memory, <laughs> I'd say probably one of the best ones is the the human nature. Uh, human nature cliffhanger is really good. The, uh, mm. There's stuff like yeah. there's stuff like obviously like Good Man Goes to War. Um, the Angel of London one's really mm. good. Uh, the, yeah, yeah. Like this, the good man goes to war is a good one. Yeah, I think heaps. My favorite, and I, I've said this a, a lot before, is the ending of Face the Raven, because mm. like companion just died. Doctor knows that the Time Lords are kind of responsible for it. 
Doctor's in a really bad mental space and he's like, I'm going to fuck these guys up now. The Doctor has been sent away. He's been teleported away. No companion. No TARDIS. No hope. Um, and and it's just like, I, I think got the most, the most unanswered questions, even though it's like kind of the end of an episode, you know, like Face the Raven's kind of a, its own episode in a way. But yeah. Yeah. I guess for my worst one, I mean, I can't really think at the moment, but God, worst one. I don't know. Like, I guess, I guess from memory, I hate the, the almost people, the rebel flesh to me. It's such a boring two parter. And there's that stupid cliffhanger mm. at the end where the doctor comes down and he's like a flesh doppelganger. That for me mm. probably is one of them. I'm so interested to rewatch that two part because I remember it being pants as a kid. Yeah, no, I remember. I remember that as well. Oh, yeah, God, best and worst, best and worst, best and worst. What what is the worst? Thinking about series nine, they've got lots of two parters in there, um, but all of them I think have pretty decent cliffhangers. Um, God, that's tricky. Tricky question, mate. Tricky question. That's the clock ticking as Aiden doesn't think of anything. Ah, fuck. What's the cliffhanger from the Dalek one in season three? I am a human Dalek. Human Dalek. You are my future. Maybe that. That's pretty shit. That's pretty shit. Fair enough. Probably not the worst one ever, but okay, that's what you pick. Also, before we get in the Doctor's Den, uh, he it's said... Pretty dog shit. He replied to me about... Um, we like, what's your favourite episode to watch in 24 Hour Loop? He said, okay, my favourite episode is Blink, but I think if I had to watch 24... If I had to watch it 24 times, I would start to notice more and more flaws in the episode and just get sick of watching it. So I'd watch Orphan 55 over and just mock it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Orphan 55 God what a oh, pants bless episode Benny. Benny Goodness me um, I only got two Doctor's Dens this week Which made, which made me want to die So thanks everyone um, Anyway it's time for it's another time for Doctor's Den Doctor's Den Is it just a door closing Is that what it is <laughs> Yeah <laughs> Thank you Alright so this is where door. people pitch us uh, ideas and we say if we are in or out. If we're, we're pretty much acting like me and Aiden work at the BBC and we're like producers saying if you want to spend a lot of money making whatever these people pitch us. Um, and uh, mm. this one was, uh, I pretty, pretty much just asked everyone to send in your ultimate spin-off ideas. Anyway, Jacob said this, while season 13 is airing weekly, uh, videos will be uploaded to the Ryan Sinclair YouTube channel for fans to watch. These will be formatted like vlogs in which Ryan and Graham investigate events which they believe Doctor or Aliens are involved in. With Graham saying, you're doing it mate, at least once a video. <laughs> the last video will end with the sound of the TARDIS landing <laughs> in the season 13 final in which the Doctor, having grown closer to Yaz, sacrifices herself and is injured. After dropping Ryan and Graham back home, the Doctor regenerates in front of Yaz, leading to the Christmas special, which would be the 14th, which would be 14th first episode. I reckon that's pretty cool, actually. I like that. It's a cool concept. I feel like it was definitely more of a series 13 plan than, than a spin-off idea. But, um... I like, yeah, I, I like, I miss having min minisodes and stuff that like lead into yeah. episodes and shit like that. Um, we're literally, once series six starts, we're heading into the era where like minisodes that were just like coming out like that, you know. There's been a couple of bonus scenes in series five, but. Pond life and stuff. Yeah, we get pond life. There was like three, um, I think they did three minisodes in the gap between, also between series six and seven, I think. Um, then there's the two part of Minizode, Space and Time. There's the episode, I think, like, Good as Gold. And that's, um, that was, like, a fun one that they made, like, uh, like a charity fundraiser one, I think, where, um, people sent in scripts and the best one that's was awesome. the one that got made. Um, yeah, th there's just a bunch of Minizodes coming in. I didn't know people sent in their scripts. Yeah, yeah, it was, and you had to be, like, under 16 or something. <laughs> no way, that's awesome. So it was, like... To an encourage kids to write. So that was awesome. What if you were like our age and you just said you were 16 and your script airs and they're like, come on out. You wrote this episode and I come out as like a grown know, ass man. I'm sure man they like somehow a grown, figure out like, like a, a fact beard. check. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, all right. So this is Dylan's one. Uh, 
I hope I'm saying this right. Eusius, Eusius and his girlfriend, Tiakra, live on the outskirts of the... Oh my god, these words, how am I supposed to say this? Of the Seattle, Tiakra is dying. There's rumours that the Time Lords... Oh my god, these words. This... <laughs> this was the time was in the had the ability to regenerate. Eusius isn't sure if it's true or not, but he'll do whatever it takes to find out. That's his hypnotist. Imagine India join Imagine Indiana Jones meets Doctor Who, an action adventure series set on Gallifrey. The villains of the series would be the Time Lord Council. But because of what Tribunal established in the Timeless Children, I thought that we that there we could add more to Time Lord Law. But establishing that only a few Gallifreyans have the ability to regenerate. The show acts as an Oh, and Forgy. I hope I'm using that word in the right context about the class system on Gallifrey. I know just an idea could be cool. I'm sorry, I don't understand those words, so I don't get what you're trying to say, but I'm sure that's great. I'll probably have to be out because I don't understand. No, I get it. I don't get it. I don't know what those words meant. I was trying to read them properly. I get it. I think it's a cool idea. I'm just so done with Gallifrey. Like, um, I'm fine for them maybe to go back... I want them to explore this time with children stuff and, and the the division. I think the division could be a cool part, a cool factor of Gallifrey, but I kind of hope it all gets explored off-world. I'm just sick of how modern Hugh looks when they do Gallifrey. I'm sick of just the washed out, uh, just like the overlooking of the orange. So if they did it, I'd like them maybe to take a different approach whilst also, you know, having it, you know, you want it to still be Gallifrey, the Gallifrey we know. But yeah. Um, yeah, maybe slightly different production design. Maybe see some like greenery, proper greenery and shit like that. I think would be would be a cool choice. Um, so yeah. we I'm have gonna, seen a lot of Gallifrey. I'm on I'm on the fence. Yeah, I'm gonna lean towards a yes though. If it's an anthology, I feel like anthologies every week the episodes look kind of different. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with yes for this one, Dylan. You got my approval, mate. You're doing it, mate. You're doing it, mate. Fair enough. Thank you for everyone who sent in their reviews and stuff. Uh, Papa bless, Papa stress. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so we've only got, what, three more episodes to, well, obviously a two-part final, but we've got three episodes left of season five. And then, um, yeah, we're on to Christmas Cow, which Christmas Cow, by the way, is, is the one episode I broke um, our agreement of not watching episodes ahead in mm. time. But yeah, watching a, Chris, watching a Christmas Carol on... Christmas Eve is a tradition of mine, so I mm. did watch that. Christmas Eve just gone, so I have seen it. Yeah, recently, I'll be keen to watch it. But... It's definitely one of those ones that I've watched relatively recently. Like it is still like a while ago now. It's weird that like we're doing this. We've almost done this for a year, so now there's like a definite thing of like I've not watched these episodes in a year. Like we like we know we've definitely not touched these episodes. Yeah, in that time, it's just so. So weird to me to be like, I've not watched a Peter Capaldi episode in a year. Like, I cannot believe that. Yeah. It causes me so much pain. Well, with how fast we've been going through Matt's era, I mean, I know we did two episodes in one week, but it feels so quick that we've gone through it. It does feel really quick, hey? I know we did two episodes it'll, last week, but still. It'll slow down a bit, though, because um, 6B and all of Series 7 are just single parts. Mm. Yeah. True, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Moffat was like, that's a great way to do it. I always hated that. I don't know why he did that, but is what it is. I don't mind shaking up the format of the show because it gets very like, oh, 13 episodes, episodes four and five, going to be a two-parter. Oh, wonder what the episode. Oh, my God, Aiden. Eight and nine two-parters going to be. Wow. Bro, season nine is going to be so short for us because they're all two-parters. I know, I thought that. It's going to be like six episodes or something. That's fucked. Surely, um, nah, but surely we do stuff like Girl Who Died, Woman Who Lived. That can be separate, surely. And stuff like Hell Bent and Heaven Sent can be separate, surely. I I, I reckon the, that Maisie two-parter, I reckon we do that as one. But yeah, I, I'd like, because the episodes are so different and I just think it's not fair to do a combined score for Heaven Sent and Hell Bent and, and shit. So yeah, Heaven Sent deserves I reckon for episode. those, we, we, we split those three episodes up into single parts. Lots to talk about in those episodes anyways, so... Exactly. That's the uh, that's what I'm going for. Uh, I'm going to watch a Quiet Place two today, so that'll be fun. Oh yeah, that has that just come out? Yeah, it came out yesterday in Australia. Ah, that's cool, as. Yeah, I'm excited to watch that. Uh, I really like the first one a lot. 
So it's such a cool experience mm-hmm. in the cinema because it's like so quiet, like no pun intended. But like, it's a pretty quiet place. Yeah, you don't you don't get like annoying teenagers in the front row chatting to their fucking friends, which pissed me off. Yeah, you can't do that in a movie like that because you can hear everything. Like you can't even eat food. Yeah. Like you can't be eating popcorn because you can like hear like no, no. <laughs> like me chewing my. I might gum try and catch pod. it next week. Yeah, you should. You should. I, I hear it's really good, mm. so I'm keen as to watch it. Bit scared because I fucking hate Hanging. like jump scares and shit like that, but it is what it is. Because you're a little bitch. Shall we give our reviews for The Fuck Hungry you. Earth and Cold Blood? You know, I was going to give it... I don't know. I was going to give it a 7, but I feel like it doesn't really deserve that. Because, again, even even re- even re-reviewing it now, like there's really not much to to go off, especially in part 2. So I'm going to give it a six, 6 and 3 quarters. Or a 6, 7, seven 5, as five. you would say. Yeah. Which is the lowest I've given this, this year. But... I look back and like even episodes like Beast Below and like Victory of the Daleks, I enjoyed them more. Like, but this episode was definitely really? fun. Far from terrible. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because I, I was thinking maybe a six, but I, I definitely enjoyed it. I think more than uh, the Vampires in Venice and the Beast Below, which I gave a six point seven five and a six point five respectively. Um. So, I, I thought I'm gonna give this this bad boy a seven. I thought the ending's great. There's some pretty decent performances in there from the main cast. Um, the production design's great. Um, it's just got a nice kind of feel to the episodes, I think. Um, and I, I love all the polit- political stuff they were trying to get at. And I, I think that was executed well and integrated into the story without being like an on your nose kind of vibe like we get into later in the show. So, um, yeah, I gave it a seven. Okay. For once, Aiden gave the bigger score than me. <laughs> Who knew? Still yeah, loving crazy, this season, hey? though. Still loving it. I think it's uh, fun as fuck. Really is. Fun as fuck, man. Fun as fuck. But yeah, um, we'll be recording on Monday. Our review of Vincent and the Doctor. Then we got The Lodger. That's what Dan's coming on. So the next two episodes will be guests. So the only other time this season will just be you and I and we'll be on the finals. So we got two guests coming up. I think... Yeah, boy. Wasn't season... Yeah, in season four, the last season we did, we had Xavier and Dan back to back. So that happened last season. For some reason, they keep picking the episodes that go together. But back to back, yeah, because yeah. Cool. And I really want to push. Um, and I say it's a lot, but I mean it now. I really want to push series six. Try and get people on, even if it's just like you know, friends of the show that we, we've met through the show. Mm-hmm. Um, just to shake it up a bit, because you know we we. we this season it's been great and i've actually enjoyed doing just a lot of episodes in a row of just us but i reckon it's time we expand you know get some get some good kush going get some uh get some josh snares on the podcast give it a crack might as well try if you never Mm -hmm. try you never know there you go Mm. bang bang all right guys thank you so much as always for listening um and we'll see you next Monday, be sure to follow us at 50 Doctor uh, on both Twitter and Instagram and send us through your review. Oh, well, by the time this comes out, we'll be recording it. Um, just remember, follow follow it's those that, follow those accounts so you can see when we're posting and asking for your reviews for the following episodes in the following week. What a messy sentence. You can just ignore that if you want to, but uh, we like to talk to you over there. So, um, Get the dogs. What a saying. I love that saying. Your Connor, do you want to lead us out in song, my man? Oh, of course, Aiden. I love doing that. Wowee. All right, you ready? Yeah, let's do it. And a one, and a two, and a skiddly diddly do. It's, it's Aiden and, and Connor's podcast. They're doing Doctor Who reviews. Doing Doctor Who reviews.